Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Kim Nassai doing another segment of My Mom Mondays. And on today's segment of My Mom Mondays, what I just want to talk about is, unfortunately, uh, last week, uh, NFL running back, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, and he played for, I believe, the Chicago Bears, but mostly the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Marion Barber passed away um, at the age of 38. Um, they don't know yet what was the cause of his death yet, or they have not reported it yet. So I can't go into details about exactly about his death or anything. But what I do want to talk about is not necessarily the NFL factor, but just the overall big picture of like this game of football. Like I said, I've, I'm, I coach, I play football. And I just want to go into a lot more details about just like the overall health wise of like the outcome of some of the NFL athletes and athletes in general that play football of like after afterlife of football. And so, like I said, unfortunately, uh, last week, Mary and Barbara passed away. And there is also other NFL players such as Vincent Jackson recently, uh, Demarius Thomas, Junior Seau. There's a, a, a list of NFL players that passed away. And most of it is sometimes is due to, uh, what is it, uh, CTE. And they don't get diagnosed about it until they pass away. And I don't want to talk about that because we know that history. We, we know about the NFL players that pass away. But what about those players who went Division Two, who had opportunity to go Division One, but things didn't pan out on the Division One level, or on the FBS level, if y'all don't know what FBS level is, that's the big level. Then you have FCS, like such as HU, North State and stuff like that. But they didn't pan out on the FBS level or they just didn't pan out on the college level, but they still managed to go to the Canadian Football League, Arena Football League, or heck, even semi-pro, and they still managed to play those things. But unfortunately, they, they suffered those same similar injuries that them same similar brain injuries that NFL players that have had like such a CTE and we don't get that reported because I'm pretty sure there's a lot more players like how my father and I, we shared this conversation a few times where we just like, man, like I have certain issues with my, with my head or I have certain issues with my brain. Sometimes why I step out sign in bright light, this triggers the headaches and stuff like that. And he shared similar stories to me too. And we don't get reported about it. We there's no there's no one telling there's nothing that we can say out loud publicly or there's no public help we could get just because for the fact that we played football and stuff like that. And that's what I'm talking about. Is this that there's possibly a guy right now who's 35 years old who's had who's played football since the age of six years old who's been who's constantly this is in that grind. And by the age of 30, he's having these these same headaches, having these similar personality changes and personalities, and we don't report it. And there's no one talking about that. And I just want to talk about that itself because I feel like that's just as important because there might be times where like domestic disputes happen or there's some type of violence that happen or this person committed suicide and we don't look at it and look at their background history of them playing football for a long period of time. And we don't really pay attention to that factor alone. When as an NFL player who passed away, had those same issues, had that same background of playing football for a long period of time. And we talk about it, but we don't report those who played in the Canadian Football League. We don't report those who played in the Arena Football League. We don't, pl we don't report those who played in semi-pro and how it affects their mental and how that constant constant contact of the brain and the constant contact of the head has affected them on their livelihood and how sometimes like it could affect them to the point where they have to excessively abuse alcohol, excessively abuse drugs because that's the only way how they could cope with the pain that they have to deal with inside of their head. And like me, I'm not opposed to kids playing football. I'm a football coach. I love the game and stuff like that. But what I'm opposed to is is excessive is excessive contact, excessive drilling these these kids and making them feel like if 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 you don't make this play or if you can't play right now, you're a quitter. No, if you can't make this play right now and your head is hurting, you have the right 
Like you should be sitting your butt on that sideline because your 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 future is more important, right? Your future is more important than what what you could do for me right now. And that's what I just want to get at is just like understanding that like yes, football is a great it's a great opportunity for everyone. It's a it's a great opportunity for everybody to eat. I don't want nobody to feel like. That's only the football player eats and stuff like that. We got to also understand coaches are out there eating too. But as a coach, are you willing to go above and beyond for your kid health, for your player health, just for you to get get that financial gain or that or that ego gain? Because I'm not. I'm telling you that right now. Like if a kid tell me their head is hurting, sit your butt to that sideline. I don't care. I don't care if we if the game is close. Your life is more important than than my than my ego. And I'm just saying that as a as a coach and just saying that as a person because I've been on that other side where my head been where I had a headache and it lasted for two weeks and I had to and I was told I had to sit down. Now I'm thinking it over, that was the best decision my coaches ever made and and the uh trainers ever made for me. And like I said, we don't report those those people that's not in the NFL who's who's dealing with similar issues. And I just wanna use this opportunity to speak up for those people who's played in the Canadian Football League, who's played in arena football, who's played in semi-pro since the age of five and six years old. And now they got to deal with headaches. They got to deal with changes in their personality. And they possibly got to deal with CTE because they need to be spoken for too at the same time. And like I said, unfortunately, RIP to Marion Barber. He was a very physical running back. And just from looking at the reports, from like what I heard from Des Bryant, where he said like a year ago, like, like something is gonna happen to Marion Barber, or to one of my favorite podcasts or videos, YouTubers that I watch, Flimlo Raps, was saying he had some he had some disturbing history those that, that was in the recent past after he played in the NFL, and that should be taken into account of like what's going that was going on in his brain and stuff like that. But like I said though, man. There's, there's guys out here that don't get that doesn't get their stuff reported, and there's no medical field out here to to just cater to those guys. They cater to us, and I feel like even if we just get five percent help, I think it will all help out. I think football should have like a waiver or like a long term insurance plan where if if that person played more than ten years, something like that. They should be at least qualified for some type of mental treatment or some type of mental, you know, there's some type of mental, uh, there's some type of health screening to where they get their brain checked out at least every 10, five to 10, five to 10 years, just because of the fact that they dealt with so, so much physical contact. And that's all I just wanted to say, y'all. RIP to Marion Barber. I hope all football players just take this time to look at this video and just realize what I'm saying because it might be you that's going through this and you're 35 years old or you're 38 and you're 40 years old and you feel like your your, your brain injuries are not being reported. And I just wanted to speak up for that. And with that being said, y'all, this is Kimlin Saxton, another segment of My Mom Mondays.